modern development has caused changes in all aspects of Thai society. The positive impacts of the development are economic growth, progress of material and public utilities, modern communication system improvement and expansions of education. However, few of these results have reached rural areas or the underprivileged in the society. On the other hand, rapid economic growth and the rise of the consumerism had led to a state of economic dependence and deterioration of natural resources as well as the dissolution of existing kinship and traditional groups to manage them. The traditional knowledge and wisdom that have been employed to solve problems and accumulate in the past are forgotten and have sought to disappear. Significantly, what has dissipated is the people's ability to rely on themselves and conduct their lives and pursue their destiny with dignity. For Thailand, the 1997 economic crisis served as a costly lesson of unbalanced and unstable growth, partly due to the improper economics and social development process in which the economy relied heavily on foreign capital inflow and external markets. self sufficient economy is the philosophical practice to maintain a way of life. This is used for citizens from all levels, starting from families, various communities, until different government agencies. This philosophy is also used for developing and managing the country in order to operate sufficiently. Focus especially on the way to develop Thailand agricultural sector so that the country can keep up with the pace of globalization world. The word sufficient means being modest and reasonable. It is also necessary to have an immutable system that is sufficiently maintained to manage any internal or external changes. In this case, it relies on knowledge, being careful and acknowledging when bringing different lessons and philosophy to teach and use to implement it to any stage of any development plan. At the same time, it is crucial to strengthen the base of the citizen minds and feelings, especially the government officials, theorists, and entrepreneurs in all levels of ensure they have morals, loyalty, fair, and suitable knowledge to operate life with efficiency, tolerance, exhaustion, caution, minds, and always being aware of any situations. To keep balance and be ready to adapt to changes quickly and extensively, both in the social and cultural environment of the globalized world. The new theory is the most distinct and concrete example of the application of the philosophy of subsistence economy to the agricultural sector. His Majesty King Pumipon initiates this theory to help Thai farmers who suffer from the impacts of economic crisis, natural disasters, and other unproductive natural conditions. The new theory suggests the farmer apply this essential principle of the philosophy of sufficiency economy, namely moderations, due consideration and self-immunity to the practice of farming, as this would shield them from the risk and impact of globalization and other uncontrollable factors in their farming. Importance of new theory of mind contain three main steps. First, maintain and divide the land into smaller portions of plot that are well defined for the benefit of the farmers, which no one has thought of before. Second, calculations using theory about the amount of water to retain for sufficient crops throughout the years. Third, having a complete plan for farmers that are divided into three phases. New theory is divided into three phases. Phase 1, 
farmland divisions for optimum benefits. The land is divided into four parts with a ratio of 30, 30, 30, and 10. The first 30% is designed for a pond to store rainwater during the rainy season, while during the dry season, it serves to supply water to grow crops and raise aquatic animals and plants. The second 30% is set aside for rice cultivation during the rainy season for the family daily consumption throughout the year to cut down on expense and allow the farmers to be self reliant The third 30% is used for growing fruit and perennial trees, vegetable, field crops, herbs for daily consumption. If there is any surplus, it will be sold. The last 10% is set aside for accommodation, animal husbandry, roads, and other structure. Phase 2 Communal agriculture. After the first step has been realized, the farmers are encouraged to form groups or cooperatives to carry out farming and agricultural activity in the following areas. First area, production. Farmers must cooperate in the production of crops, starting from preparing the soils, obtain plant species, fertilizers, water supply, etc. For cultivations. Second area, marketing. When the rice crops are harvested, there must be preparations in many areas to gain the highest profit from them. Preparing a common drying space, silos, rice mills, as well as cooperating in selling the produce to obtain good prices and cut down on expenses. Third area, living conditions. At the same time, farmers must maintain a certain degree of proper living with sufficient basic requisites such as food, fish, paste, fish sauce, and clothing. Food area, welfare. In each community, there should be a necessary welfare and services such as a health center in time of sickness or a fund providing loans to be used to carry out activities in the community. Fifth area, education. The community should play an active role in promoting education. For example, setting up an education fund for children in the community. Last area, society and religion. The community should be the center for social and mental development with religion as the binding factor. All the aforementioned activities must receive correlations from all parties concerned with the government or private sector as well as members of the community. Phase 3 Loan and Credit Outreach After the second phase, the farmer should move into the third phase by making contacts with banks or private companies to obtain funds, to assist with investment or developing their quality of life. In this way, both farmers and banks or private companies will gain mutual benefit as follows. Benefits of New Theory Agriculture The people can live more lately at an economical level without having to starve and can be self reliant according to the sufficiency economy philosophy. In the dry season, when water is scarce, the water stored in the pond can be used to grow vegetables that can thrive on a small amount of water without having to rely on the irrigation system. In years, when it rains, the in-season with rainwater available all year round, the new theory can earn income for the farmers who do not have to worry about expenses. In case of floods, farmers can recuperate and help themselves to a certain degree without needing much assistance from the government, a save on the budget in a way. <laughs>